All right, so I'm crouching down like this because my tripod is set up to show you my um, painting and frame making process. So today I am going to, like I just said, show you how I frame my farmhouse style signs using just super thin quarter inch or eighth inch plywood or underlayment or whatever it is that you're using. But again, this is super lightweight so that you don't have to have a heavy, thick frame, um, both for the purposes of um, being heavy on the walls um, and also it'll save you a lot on shipping if you are um, selling these. So I have two different styles I wanna show you today. And the first style is the kind where the fine house where the ends are going to butt up against each other. Square like that. The second one has mitered 45 degree corners where they're going to come together like that. And for these examples, I'm using a square frame. Um, this one here is going to be 12 by 12 overall. So my frame, the outside dimensions of the whole sign is 12 by 12. And to get that, I have my two longer boards are both 12 inches. My inside pieces are, um, I'm gonna have to get, I'll get you exact dimensions in the comments, um, but they're shorter as you can see, because they're gonna go inside. And then the piece that I cut with my Glowforge, or you can cut with your table saw or anything else, this is 11 inches. For this style, you are going to cut all four of your pieces, if it's square, at the same length. So you'll see here, they all, well, they all are, are as tall as each other. And that's because they're butting up at the ends. So what I'm gonna do is quickly paint this guy and these frames and while that's drying I'll show you how I nail these and this will show you how quick and easy it really is um, and secure to get one of these um, frames made and really it just will take um, minutes so These signs can, um, this process can be used for those of you that use a Cricut and you stencil a design or paint design onto the top. Um, for Glowforge users that use 3D designs on top, it will work for whatever you, um, however your finished method is. I am a bit of a sloppy painter. And I'm gonna do a quick process here. Usually what I do is a couple different layers and I sand in between for smoothness. Um, oftentimes, of course, you'll have this part done and dry before you start framing. But if you do sign parties, this is a super quick, easy, way to be able to finish off your signs and not worry about blowing a nail through the front of your um, customer's brand new painted perfect sign. And that is so disappointing and that is what led me to buying a router table to start making my frames this way because it didn't matter how straight I was shooting my nail gun. And I'll admit, I am not the straightest best shot, but even when I was shooting them nice and straight, um, 
they would still sometimes blow through the front and back of the sign and that's because with the thicker plywood you're going to have um or then you're going to have knots and grooves and whatnot that that nail is going to bounce right off of and shoot up shoot up so that happened to me way too many times super frustrating and wanting to do sign parties it just worried me thinking that people were going to spend all this time and money to make these beautiful signs and i was going to have to worry about blowing the nails through the back so that is not a problem with this method because we are going to be nailing only through the corners of the frame and not through the backer board at all and the other thing I really like about this method is that I always think of those heavy nursery signs you know people that make them for nurseries and I know that you know everyone I'm sure is being really safe and careful about hanging them but I always just think like if a piece of the frame gave out or if anything happened it's all such heavy wood but with this it's um, super light and although you still of course don't want it to fall on your child I think the damage would be far less with this lightweight wood um, easier for the walls there's just all kinds of benefits oh wow look what I just did I just threw <laughs> I am telling you guys, I am the sloppiest crafter. A lot of this is going to wait until I start spreading it. A lot of this is going to be hidden. Okay. So please know that this is not perfect. This is just an example. And my customers. I'm going to be a heck of a lot more diligent to make sure this is painted uh, nicely if I'm sending this out to a customer. But, okay. We're going to let that dry real quick. Now, I'm going to just use here, I have a water base. I don't know if you can probably not see. Name this up. There it is. Um, and I, I prefer the look and the final outcome of an oil-based stain, but it takes a really long time in comparison for the oil-based stain to dry. Um, the odor is a lot, um, there's a lot more odor and strong chemical smell with the oil based. So again, if you're doing sign parties or going to other people's homes to do this um, or sending supplies to people, you may want to consider using the water based. Um, also, it's a, you know water based is a much easier cleanup. You don't have to uh, use the paint thinner. It's a lot easier if you make a mistake to or Make a mess to go ahead and with soap and water clean up. So I would probably, again, it's not my absolute favorite. It goes on more like a paint. You know, it doesn't penetrate like a stain. It sits more on top like a paint. Um, but it does the job, and I will usually um, sand it to stress it up a bit. But just to give you an example this is a walnut and this is a dark walnut but this is an oil-based stain and this is the um, water-based stain so I'm just I'm not even gonna oh yes I am I'm gonna worry about painting these because people will see this so you're gonna want to paint all the surfaces of each of these and generally, you're going to let one side dry before you just go paint the other and throw it around on your board. But 
today we're going quick. So it really goes pretty far, this um, water-based stain. It, um, it's thinner than like your craft paints, so it definitely spreads around and absorbs more, but just doesn't penetrate quite like the oil-based stain. If I was um, having kids at the paint party, I probably um, would be using this over oil. And honestly, really, it, most paint parties, oil, it, it's possible, but it's not gonna, um, it's not gonna be fully dry before your party is over. I just realized that I'm not sure if I showed you guys in the beginning I'm not but um with these squared off style not the mitered corners the two longer pieces have the router is plunged in not right at the end here I'll just show you right now so you can see how at each end, it does not go all the way through. This, these go all the way through. These do not. And that is so that um, you won't see those grooves at the end edges of your frame when they're all assembled. Um, with the mitered corners, you'll never see them anyways because of the way that the corners all butt up against each other. But with the squared off corners, you do see the longer ends. And so, if you are using your router, I go 3 sixteenths inch, inches, 3 sixteenths of an inch um, deep with my groove. I go about a half inch back so I have about a half I do I have a half inch here in front of the sign and then the back is where people can use to hang it or where it's just kind of recessed back um, what else but yeah you with the shorter ones just kind of start and plunge all the way through you want to set up stoppers or you just want to mark the points where you're going to plunge on the um, longer ones and if anybody needs exact dimensions and you know degrees whatnot of thicknesses um, of each piece of wood um, I'll try to remember to put those into the comments of the description um, but feel free to reach out to me and I'll send you all of those and if you need help figuring out what your dimensions are let me know and I can try to help you. I am not a mathematician but basically you're to you know it's going to depend on the thickness of um, your frames and each um, 
I've got, I get a couple different kinds and it just seems to depend on where they're getting their supply from at the time. But um, I have some that when I put the two together like that, so that would be, you know, for each side, the measuring, um, it's about, well, each one's about an eighth thicker on my other style. Okay, so I'm seriously gonna get a mess, you guys. I'm gonna set these to the side to dry. everything yes. and I'm gonna just show you quickly how easy it is to frame one of these guys up so you can generally you'll have your design painted on the front already um, or paint your backer or whatnot you don't have to but it would make the most sense I don't have my design but I want to show you how I'm gonna do it So we have an air compressor and a nail gun and all of that, um, but I always found it to be such a pain to have to drag the air hose around and it's attached in the garage. So this has been super, super handy once it's a port cable. Just a um, battery operated brad nailer. It's definitely heavier than the other one, but it works um, great in my opinion. I'm gonna push my table back here. Okay, I'm gonna do the best to be able to show you while I'm in position. Okay, so I'm butting up my corners. I've got this backer slid into the grooves and I've got my corners here and I am just gonna run a nail right into set myself up with the best spot here sorry guys really it's so much easier than making it look but just get your corner together there I'm gonna go this way because I don't have room right now Got that piece just slid into the grooves. Okay, you can see I've got, and this is what it looks like. Slid into each of the grooves and I'm gonna secure it right here. So this is the last piece here. You can see basically I'm just gonna get it up in there. So, and you can see it's just secured into those corners there. It's super lightweight. All right, I'm going to run crash boom. You guys are going to get all these bloopers. I'm not even going to edit them out, probably. That is uh, probably one thing I'll try to start doing eventually is editing my videos. But at this point, if I was waiting to edit them, I'd probably never get them created or posted. So, Okay, cover your ears. I'm going to blow dry for a moment to get these dry a little faster before I glue them on or nail them onto the edges rather. Oh, good enough. 
quick dry. for demonstration purposes. Okay, again, just a quarter inch backer board. Nobody's gonna see these edges, so I didn't care if I got paint on them. If this was not gonna be framed, I would've been much more careful about that. So, um, basically you're just going to fit them in. And I kind of start with one that has not gone all the way through and one that has gone all the way through. I start with two corners, kind of secure it, and then go around from there. Just make sure you're lining them up right. You know, you get more room on the back than the front. And I'm not being patient, and my fingers are filthy, so hopefully this doesn't turn into too much of a mess. I just said to what? Make sure you put it in the same direction. I did not do that. So I am not <laughs> in my normal work area where I have the elbow room, so I'm looking pretty awkward here. I apologize. Let me get this out of the way here. After you get this first one lined up, it really is going to be so much easier. guys I am making this look so much harder than it is it really is <laughs> that's hard okay let's lock our final piece in Corners nice and tight. Okay, that's it. I say that's it. I made it look way harder than it is, but really, so you'll see there's nothing blown through because I went through, you can see the little nail hole right there, right there. You could put two, you know, if you want to put one on the top, one on the bottom. For now, I just put one because it's seriously so light. These furring strips weigh almost nothing. This stuff, 
it's super light. Okay, I hope that helps with framing and um, I do have another video that showed in the wood shop um, running the router groove through if you have questions um, about either of the videos, how to do it. If you want um, more step-by-step -step instructions, let me know.